Is Netflix still considered a nice investment right now? Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today I will talk about Netflix stock, why Netflix might or might not be a nice investment right now, what do I expect from Netflix for their quarter one 2021 earnings and more. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that like button since it really helps the channel out. Also, I have a completely free Discord group chat which is growing on a daily basis and the link for that is down in the description below. Obviously, during 2020, Every streaming platform saw huge growth and Netflix as a leader in the industry was not left behind. But to be able to know what to expect for their next earnings and for the whole 2021, let's see how they did last year because I do think that Netflix is the biggest media company at the moment and still has the potential to double in size. They have had an excellent revenue growth year over year since 2011. They have not had any kind of downside in their revenue since then because that is what Netflix does. Us. They grow and grow every year and that is why I still see it as a growth company with huge potential growth. Now they have had a revenue growth of 27 and 24 percent in the last two years which obviously is incredible for such a huge company. Take into consideration that Netflix is currently trading at $549 per share, almost $550 and has a market cap of $243.47 billion. Yes, it has a PE ratio of 90.4 which is normal for Netflix, which is a leader in the industry with a nice and excellent revenue growth year over year in comparison to the others. Same with their subscribers. Pay subscribers have grown on a constant basis since they started and obviously saw huge acceleration due to the pandemic last year. And even though they might be losing market share, they are not losing customers. Right now, Netflix dominates 50.2% of the market competition, primarily competing with Prime Video or other platforms that are not defined here. Obviously, people are worrying about their market share about because about two years ago was 64.6% of the market and it is all the way down to 50% right now, two years later. But that is something that does not worry me at all because it is obvious that that will happen in every single industry with every leader company. The important thing for me is that they continue being the leader in the, in, in the industry. The thing is, how long will they be able to maintain leadership? That is a difficult question to answer within the streaming industry because we see that streaming has been divided in two different sectors, the live streaming and the movies and TV show streaming services. Obviously, everything depends on how much Netflix continues innovating and entering new markets, but despite the great advantage that Netflix has enjoyed as a leader because of being the first one in on creating this kind of service, we have seen competitors like Disney Plus or Apple TV Plus that have got up really quickly and they are not the only ones trying to approach Netflix. I'm not going to say that Disney was a disappointment as many say because their growth is incredible as well. Obviously many of these media companies are that are trying to enter the streaming services will not succeed as they think and could easily disappear but in the short term they could affect Netflix by taking some market share. Even though Netflix is already the leader in the TV show and movie sector of the streaming industry, I do believe they should continue investing money to be able to continue growing even more. I think they should also get into live streaming sports and esports streaming as well. This would lead them to a position to position themselves in categories that are not yet strong and that have a lot of potential for the long term. Because in the TV shows and movie sectors, it is not a secret that they have almost the best content. They are creating local content in places like India, Spain, Mexico, Italy, Turkey, Germany, Brazil, France and obviously in the US and that has paid off very well for Netflix as well internationally and that is why I think that they need to diversify to that live streaming services. They have the biggest library and are adding content really fast to their platforms, which is why I think they should continue investing tons of millions of money into it. But I think that live streaming could take them to another level of growth. Something that they have been able to increase as well year over year is their ARPU ARPO or average revenue per paying users. It has gone all the way up almost to $11 per user, which is the highest in the industry, which obviously it could be dangerous because their competitors are really low balling them since Disney Plus costs $5.99 monthly and Apple TV Plus $4.99 a month. And even though both of them can't 
compare with Netflix huge content library, people may think that they could lose customers because of their expensiveness. But I think that people are willing to pay even more for Netflix right now because of their content and we all know that the solid content portfolio is their major growth driver. Another thing that is bringing them growth is their partnership. Partnerships with companies like Telefonica in Spain, KDDI in Japan, AT&T, Comcast, Dish, Verizon, Charter, Altis, and T-Mobile in the US and other countries because what they do, for example, what T-Mobile does is that I have them as my mobile provider service and depending on the mobile plan that you have with them, they include an, a Netflix plan. Could be either that one screen SD option or a two screen HD and that brings more and more clients to the platform which helps with their growth because it helps people to learn more about Netflix or use Netflix even more without having to pay the full price. Now, Netflix will report earnings tomorrow, Tuesday. I see Netflix being able to double their subscribers and company size within the next four years by 2025, so that would be a growth of about 25% year over year. I believe this is possible because Netflix is a company that, that every time I enter to their platform, they have new TV shows, new movies, and I believe more and more people will continue subscribing to their platform if they continue innovating. Analysts are expecting Netflix to report a revenue growth of about 23% for quarter one or it's $7.17 billion for the quarter and are expecting earnings of $2.96 per share. If you ask me, I don't see why they will, they will not be able to beat those expectations as 2020 was an excellent growth for them and Netflix has shown to be able to have a constant and strong growth every single year, no matter what. No matter if we're in a recession or not, in a bull or a bear market, if we're in an elections year or not, if the Republican is in power, if Democrats are in power or anything, Netflix has been able to continue seeing a massive growth every year and has been able to increase their average revenue per user as well every single year without seeing a decrease in customers because they know that people are willing to pay for their service. If you ask me, streaming services is the boom right now. I don't see many people paying for a, for a TV provider as it is very expensive. That is why I like companies like Fubo TV, Disney Plus, Netflix, Apple and many more. I know I'm not the only one that does not watch TV anymore. When I have free time to watch something I either watch Netflix Apple TV plus or YouTube I only pay for TV provider because of my parents but our generation is way different obviously there are risks of investing in companies in this company as always people do think that subscriber growth will decline or at least go back to the normal growth after COVID-19 ends the company is expecting the halt in content production due to lockdowns to delay releases of titles at least by a quarter which could affect their growth in the short term but nothing major in the long term if you ask me. Also even though I find amazing their international expansion since that could accelerate their growth, it could also result in cost ex escalations in the form of technology investments and marketing expenses. In order to sustain market share and meet intensifying competition, content strength is the primary focus which requires significant investment in 2021 and beyond and something to have into consideration is their balance sheet even though they have 39 billion dollars in total assets and 28 billion dollars in, li in liabilities meaning that they are able to cover their liabilities with their assets they ha do have a huge long-term debt of 15 billion dollars markedly the company has to pay contents obligation of 16.8 billion dollars 8.98 billion dollars in less than one year and 7.82 billion dollars within one three years within one three years this is expected to put severe pr pressure on the company's balance sheet because netflix had 8.21 billion dollars of cash as of, as of december 31st if you ask me their earnings are growing nicely on a quarterly and year Early basis but but I do think that this will be stressful for the company because they might need to increase their debt and even though the growth is impressive they need to be very very careful because during every any crisis this could be very harmful for them I'm very anxious about knowing how they did in quarter one but I do think that Netflix is a great investment in the long term with a nice growth and is able to continue being the leader in the industry for many more years if they are able to continue innovating and creating such an excellent content remember i open a second channel in spanish it will mean the world to me if you go and subscribe or at least share with any friends or family that speaks or understands spanish hope you enjoyed the video please subscribe and smash that like button since it really helps the channel out thank you and see you next time